Welcome to iLectron Line. Now imagine you lived more than 2,000 years ago and most everybody around you thought that the Earth was flat. And they looked at the moon, they really didn't know what it was. And someone came along and says, try to figure out how big that thing up there is. How big is the moon up there in the sky? And you would be perplexed. You'd say, wow, I wouldn't even know where to start. But there were some smart people back then. One of them, his name was Arthi Aristarchus. He was a Greek who lived between 3010 and 230 BC. And what he surmised was, first of all, that the sun was much bigger than the moon and the earth. And he assumed that the sun was at the center of what they do, knew then was the universe, and that the earth revolved around the sun. And he also, also assumed that the moon revolved around the earth. And so he surmised that, that once in a while, since there's a total solar eclipse, when the moon moves in front of the sun and blocks the light to the earth for some small portion of the earth, at that location right there, and usually just a small sliver on the surface of the earth, there's a total solar eclipse. The moon completely covers the sun's disk and it becomes dark like nighttime, just for a few minutes. And they knew that happened in regions around the world once in a while, and when it happened, it was only in a very small specific region. So the, the conclusion they drew was that the shadow of the moon was tapered, and by the time the shadow of the moon reached the Earth, it had gone down to just a very small region. So they figured that the, uh, that the, taper, that the taper of the shadow was a known quantity. So then what they said was, well, on the other side of the Earth, once in a while, the Earth blocks the sunlight for the moon, and then we have what we call a total lunar eclipse. But when that happens, we, we can see the moon slowly disappearing into the shadow of the Earth, staying there for a while, and then eventually reappearing another, on the other side. And they assumed that that distance, of course, from the Earth to the Moon would be the same as from the Earth to the Moon on the other side. And so they assumed that the Earth's shadow tapered in the very same way, in such a way that the diameter of the, of the Earth right here would be diminished, at least the shadow of the, of the Earth would be diminished by, diminished by one Moon diameter by the time it reached the position of the Moon. So what he assumed then was that this right here was a half a diameter of the moon, and this was one half diameter of the moon, so together forming a full diameter of the moon, which is the amount of taper the moon shadow has by the time it reaches the Earth. And then what they would do is they would watch and measure how long it would take for the moon to completely disappear into the shadow of the Earth. They could sit there, they didn't have stopwatches back then, but they had a way to measure time. And so they would watch how long it would take for the moon to completely disappear into the shadow, and then how long it would take for the moon to reappear on the other side. And based upon the rate of the moon moving in there, they could figure out that this distance right here was about two and a half diameters of the moon. So they added everything together, and they said, well, that means that the Earth right there, the diameter of the Earth, therefore, is equal to two and a half plus a half plus a half, or the diameter of the Earth was equal to 3.5 times the diameter of the Moon. So diameter-wise, they figured out back then, more than 2,000 years ago, that the Earth was about 3.5 times the diameter of the Moon. And from that information, eventually they also figured out how big the Moon was, uh, not how big the Moon was, but how far the Moon was and so forth. So we'll get into that in another video. But the amazing feat was that with studying total solar eclipses and total lunar eclipses and making some very careful measurements, they were actually e uh, able to figure out the rough size of the moon relative to the Earth. And since Eratosthenes had figured out the size of the Earth, it was a small calculation then to figure out the size of the moon. Amazing stuff. And when most people on the Earth thought the Earth was flat and in the center of the universe. So, quite something.